good day, polarizing people. Thanks for tuning in yet again, and welcome to our first tutorial video. You've almost certainly seen those small watermark logos or other icons that sit in the lower right hand corner when you watch YouTube videos. If you didn't already know, these little watermarks or buttons viewers can click on to subscribe to your channel while viewing your videos. So that makes it a lot more convenient for your subscribers, especially if they're enjoying your videos in full screen mode. That way they don't have to wait until the video's end card appears to then subscribe. Or to get out of full screen to click on a subscribe button. So again, it doesn't matter if you're a creator or a viewer or do both. It's pretty cool that YouTube offers this feature. So this is a good time to update viewers who've been following the Polarizer channel since our first video to let you know that we've added a few tools for YouTube video content creation in recent days. And a couple of these tools are particularly useful for this and other tutorial videos. We picked up TechSmith Snagit for video capture and the producer edition of FL Studios, our digital audio workstation. It's fun to buy software, recording gear, and other tech toys, but discipline is important for running a business, so the budget for splurging on content creation tools is going to remain modest until the polarizer qualifies for monetization by Google. Anyway, it was nice to be able to pick up both FL Studio, which is a relatively inexpensive but robust DAW, and snag it. And versus spending the entire budget on TechSmith's flagship video capture product, Camtasia, since Camtasia offers far more features than this channel will need for a while. Otherwise, one other item recently added to the Polarizer Content Creation Toolkit is Pointer Focus. And this is primarily used for cursor effects like highlighting as you move the cursor around your computer screen. I downloaded Pointer Focus a couple years ago for work-related presentations, so this isn't really a new tool per se, it's more like something we're dusting off. But in any case, it made choosing Snagit over Camtasia easier, since at this time Camtasia comes with cursor effects, but Snagit doesn't. And being able to apply various cursor effects really helps make tutorial videos like this, as well as other videos that need to draw attention to what the pointer or cursor is doing more effective. And on that note, let's get back to the tutorial. Here are Google's instructions, at least as of the date this video was made, for adding custom subscribe buttons to your videos. And if you're familiar with navigating through the YouTube Content Creator Studio, this looks pretty straightforward probably. It's literally easier than baking a cake and takes less time. However, you still have to create the watermark you want to use for the subscribe button. So let's go ahead and jump in and go over how this works. Okay, first of all, the good news is that you can use pretty much any image you want as the watermark image. So if you've already created an icon for your YouTube channel and you're happy using that as your watermark, then all you need at that point is to go back to the Google instructions we showed you earlier and go through those steps and you're done. Now one thing that you might have noticed is that Google does not provide recommended dimension specs for the watermark. But YouTube will actually take any image that you upload and scale it to fit within that small area allocated for the watermark. This is why existing channel icons, which Google recommends we make 800 pixels square, they work just fine, even though the watermarks on your videos will be much smaller when they appear than 800 pixels square. Personally, I like the idea of using the YouTube channel icon to help reinforce the channel's branding, but also adding some text onto the icon to make it clear that the watermark serves as a call to action for viewers to subscribe. So for the Polarizer Channel's watermark, I took the channel's icon image, opened that up first in Photoshop, and then made a copy of that file, which I could then customize and turn into a watermark. To help the watermark blend into the videos running behind it, I then deleted the black background to make the background transparent. And this can be done using any number of masking and selection techniques available in Photoshop as well as in other image editing programs. One of the most popular image editors is Pixlr Editor, and it's a free-to-use browser-based tool. There are also plenty of online tutorials covering how to make transparent images, so if this process is new to you, don't worry, the internet's got your back. In Photoshop, Pixlr, and other image editors, you can tell which areas of an image are transparent based on where a checkerboard pattern shows through. And I'm showing that here as I circle around the edges of the polarizer icon. Next, I added a white subscribe text layer over a black bar centered over the polarizer icon to complete the watermark. And the last 
bit of touch-up I've done here, the last edit to this image, was to crop the sides, and that leaves no excess space around the image. That also helps minimize the memory size of the image, since we want to make these files as small as possible for when we upload to YouTube. I then saved the watermark as a PNG file, and that is one of the image file types accepted by YouTube, and it also preserves transparency. Now we're ready to go back to the Google instructions for adding the watermark as a subscribe button to our videos. If you haven't already, sign into YouTube, go to the Creator Studio for your channel. Once you're in the Creator Studio, click on Channel in the left-hand side navigation menu, and once the channel options appear in the menu, click on Branding. Okay, we're in the home stretch, and our work so far it's just about to pay off. Click on the Add a Watermark button on the branding page, and this will pop up the Upload a Watermark window. Note that the maximum size allowed for the image file that will be used for the watermark is one megabyte. Again, earlier we mentioned we had to keep the file size small, and this is why. Now the good thing is that the PNG format, which we saved the watermark file in earlier, that uses a type of compression that results in a file size that's well below one megabyte in size. So click the Browse button to locate your watermark image file. That might be on your computer or file server. Then click Save. You should get a message then confirming that your watermark has been uploaded. Click Save one more time, and now you're back at the branding page and it will show you a preview of your brand new watermark. If the size of the watermark in the preview kind of blows you away because it's much bigger looking than you expected, because that's what I thought too the first time around, and don't worry. That's just so that you can clearly see what the watermark will look like. All that's left to do at this point is to choose when you want the watermark to first appear in each of your videos. And then go ahead and click the update button. And you're done. You can then go to the video manager page in the Creator Studio to launch one of your videos and see what your new custom watermark subscribe button looks like. And so if you actually used our tutorial to go ahead and create Watermark and then used it to add a custom subscribe button to your channel, we'd love to hear how it worked out for you. Please answer our poll, let us know how it went, and feel free to comment. Yeah, but hey, even if the subscribe buttons aren't a magic pill for achieving YouTube success, the Watermarks are still a nice touch, so why not? And if this feature helps the Polarizer channel get that one extra, or 10 extra, 100 extra, thousand extra subscribers needed to hit our first year goal, then it was definitely worth a few minutes of time invested to create and add a custom subscribe button. Alrighty folks, thank you as always for being part of our audience here at The Polarizer.